Hello everybody, welcome to Native Health's coloring class featuring me, Gregory Hill, as well as my daughter, Leticia. Hello. Uh, we are Hilltops. We are a traditional toy company that specializes in hand-carved spinning tops. Um, we make our tops from cottonwood root and each top is colored with a non-toxic watercolor for the safety of little children. Um, uh, spinning tops are not the only toys that we make. Uh, we like to make other early 19th century wooden toys such as the yo-yo or another toy which we will be coloring today which is called a tomatrop. A tomatrop is a disc of wood that has two images on either side and a string attached to either side. And when the string spins, these images are blended together. So today we will be coloring our tomatrop as I will be giving a brief history and description of what it is. So I'm going to turn this over here to my daughter Leticia and she's going to start coloring it as well each participant should have received a watercolor set as well as a paintbrush. Um, we're going to use a watercolor because it's non-toxic and will be safe for children in case they try to put the toys in their mouth. As you know every child under from birth to age five uh, one way they learn is by putting things in their mouth that's how they uh, test their senses so we're using a non-toxic watercolor um, Leticia is going to be coloring this top and I will be telling you guys about what the Tumatrop is um, like I said before it is very basically a disc of wood uh, the Tumatrop was actually a toy that was became popular in I believe 1827 but what's more interesting is that in a recent study uh, in 2012 a study was conducted where they found a piece of bone a bone disc with a leather thong through it in a cave in France and this bone disc was uh, dated back to prehistoric times so like the top the tomatrop is another toy that's very old very ancient um, so over the years, it started developing and they say that the Tomatrop was really invented in 1827 by a gentleman named John Paris. Um, this toy was further, further invented, I guess, by another gentleman that um, in 1964, he was told of a geologist by the name of William Fitton placed a bet with astronomer John Herschel that he couldn't show both sides of a shilling which is a coin used in England he couldn't show both sides of the shilling at the same time so what the astronomer John Herschel did was that he got the shilling coin and he hit it so it spun like a top but what happened was that this spinning of this coin allowed the two sides to blend together. And so the Tomatrop was invented. And the reason why the images blend together is due to what's called persistence of vision. Um, when the object is moving, um, the light is passing through it to our eye. So when this spinning disc is spinning so fast it causes a delay between the light between the object and your eye so it seems that the image is blending into one becoming one image so this is our brain working to uh, make this image slow down in our minds so when we spin the, the tomatrops with the toy with the strings um, the image blends together um, one of the earliest forms of tomatrop was uh, very uh, was basically a bird on one side I think it was a, ma a macaw which is a parrot and a cage on the other side so when it spun it seemed as if the bird was inside of the cage as the tomatrop spun um, it started being commercially made I believe in 1865 um, but they were very very expensive at that time because this was a kind of a unique toy that nobody really saw anymore so it was kind of expensive to to purchase um, they usually came in uh, like a set of five so there would be like um, some of them were made to have riddles on them um, very early images were like a man on top of a horse like I said a, a, 
a bird inside of a cage, uh, a man standing on top of a tree. There are different um, different versions of this toy. Um, but as it started getting more popular, um, it was found that because it being too expensive, a lot of, um, I guess, bootleg versions were starting to appear where they were very, very more, uh, much cheaper to purchase. Uh, this was something that was kind of played with by like the upper class people that had money. Um, so, the Tomatrop was very popular at that time because it was one of the very first um, examples of animation. Um, another example of animation is what's called a flip book, where you draw usually a stick figure image over a series of pages, and you flip the pages and it seems like the image will come to life. So the Tomatrop is said to be one of the very first examples of stop motion animation um so today we watch animation in a form of cartoons or on disney um, movies so this simple toy was like the founding step of what we now view as um, our primary means of entertainment um there were other toys that were invented using mirrors that were um mirrors and motion that were starting to appear after the Tomatrop that was kind of a furthering of the animation process. Um, so we fast forward to like hundreds and thousands, uh, hundreds of years later, and then we have cartoons. So we all watch cartoons as we grow up, but it's funny to think that all of these animations and cartoons came from what would just be a simple piece of wood uh, with two images on the side. Um, I hope you guys are all enjoying coloring so far. Uh, let's see, looks like Leticia is having fun there. Um, don't be afraid of the watercolors, guys, because they're very fun to use. Um, we like to say as artists that uh, every mistake is an opportunity. So if you go outside the line or maybe not use the, a different color, uh, don't be discouraged about that. Uh, no mistake is a mistake. Every mistake can be something made new um, so if you guys are not familiar with using a watercolor um, the watercolors are very simple to use the pigment breaks down as you add water to it and just depending on the amount of water we use uh, depends on how thick the paint gets um, Leticia is my colorer she's the actual head president of coloring department for hilltops I should say um, all of the very cool colors you see on our spinning tops are her ideas and her blending. Um, like I say, Leticia is the very reason why we are a toy company. As she, When she was a little kid in kindergarten, she came home with a um, piece of wood and instructions by the teacher to have the parents make a spinning top. So um, as that top was made, um, I became interested in making more of them. And I felt that um, as we became Hilltops, it became our mission to recreate and reimagine these old toys that are dying out in today's world. Um, everybody thinks today now um, a method of play is to stand there with your device, such as your phone or your iPad, and swipe with your finger. Um, we as Hilltops are trying to encourage um, the dying art of play using early 19th century toys in modern times. Um, we make every toy by hand um, using non-toxic materials like I say uh, most most of our material is the root of the cottonwood tree which is called Paco. So the cottonwood root is very special to us Hopi. We believe that it because it comes from the water, our creations draw moisture to the earth. So everything that we make with the cottonwood root is in hopes of um, bringing rain or snow to the world, which is very important for crops and our watersheds as well. Um, we've been going through a very big drought lately, so all the rain we need is um, would be very beneficial. So as Tisha is coloring her, her tomatrop here, um, we kind of fast forward in time. Um, the Tomatrop kind of died out 
as the centuries went by. Um, you don't really see any examples of Tamatrap now because of, of course, animation and TV. But um, there are still examples of Tamatraps in some modern uh, influences like um, motion pictures. Um, I believe in the motion picture Sleepy Hollow uh, starring Johnny Depp. There is an example of a Tama trap being used in that movie. Um, so, um, sadly, the only time we see these toys are in like period movies where it takes us back to the year 1800, 1827 to early 1900s, where this toy was very much uh, widely in use. Um, if you guys notice that Leticia is starting to color the petals of the flower now, um, you can use multiple colors to blend the petals. You know, maybe you want like a yellow inside with a purple edge of the flower. So Leticia is gonna kind of mix it up there, make some make some pretty pretty blends in with the colors there. Um, the design that she's painting right now is uh, what I like to call a sunflower which is actually the center of the design is the Hopi design for uh, Tawa or the sun and of course um, the sunflower has petals around it um, I like to use this design as a whimsical way to um, show how we can use traditional traditional designs with meanings in um, different forms in this case a sunflower um, her sunflowers looking pretty cool. Um, the colors are specific to this design. Sometimes I can I would use a like a pink face, but more more typically the face is blue. Uh, the forehead around the eyes are black, and the mouth is black. Um, usually the forehead is red and orange. Um, like I said, you can make the petals uh, whichever color you prefer. Um, it's very important to use your imagination and like I say if you don't like one color um, I'm pretty sure with the watercolors you can uh, blend over it and um, create different colors but um, it just depends on how fancy you want to get with your colors or how simple you want to get with your colors um, a lot of the um, coloring what it is is we're actually practicing our fine motor skill development uh, we're learning how to hold the paintbrush um, in a steady manner where we can color inside the lines so although we are learning what looks like fun we're actually learning something we're learning um, fine motor skill development we're learning hand-eye coordination we're learning how to paint using different techniques of the watercolor paints um, we're learning about what cool little wooden toys were way back when um, Way back before the inventions of toy stores and whatnot, um, these toys were were handcrafted and made when um, we needed toys to be made. There had to be worked at, um, so we didn't have the really a lot of um, conveniences we have nowadays with the toy stores and whatnot. So a lot of toys way back then were typically made of wood and hand carved. Uh, the Tamatrop is really very, very, um, a very cool, unique piece of uh, history in the form of a toy. Um, you'll notice Leticia is making, I believe that's purple, on the inside of her petals there. It's going to add a cool effect. So when we spin our Tamatrops, not only will they, they be colorful, but they'll be really, really cool to see. Um, a lot of the Tamatrops... Um, I believe have ladybugs on one side and a sunflower on the other side or uh, some of them will have butterflies or dragonflies I believe one might have a kiva with the sun rising behind it um, like I say please use your imagination when you color it um, I like to see all of the finished tamatraps when you're done coloring please share with Native Health um, either their Facebook page or on Instagram um, Native Health Phoenix we really thank you for having us do these cultural classes um, not only are they very important for keeping our cultures alive but it also gives us a chance to share different 
um, in my case, different toys that aren't made anymore and aren't really well known in today's modern world. Um, I'm really excited to see what the finished product will look like when Leticia is um, finished painting it there. Uh, if you want to give it a flip real quick and let's see what the other side is, uh, we'll have a idea. Oh, cool! Yeah, honeybee. One of uh, most, some of them will have honeybees as well. I forgot about the bees. Uh, I try to make my thumb traps with stories on them, um, much like the way I do my spinning tops. Um, every design has a story to it. With the thumb traps, I'm trying to use like this spinning emer energy. And it, it's funny. Fun little fact is that the word thumb trap actually means wonder spinner so uh it's derived from greek so the word tamatrap actually means spinning wonder so it's really cool that um the name actually has a, a a cool meaning as well um so when we finish coloring our tamatrap um i don't like to seal my wooden toys with um a sealant because uh like I'm, i say i would try to keep my toys safe and non-toxic but that doesn't mean uh, you at home are not able to do that. Um, I usually use a boiled linseed oil to coat the wooden toys or the tomatrop. You can coat it with boiled linseed oil. Um, this will seal the wood and uh, make the colors become more vibrant and actually keep the colors in there longer. So if you want at home, you know, using um, an adult supervision, of course, um, you can find some sort of sealant or stain and stain your tomatrop after you're done painting it. This will help it stay longer. Um, one of my concerns as a toy maker is um, how these toys will last over the years. Um, I know my wooden tops last very, very well over the years, but um, the tomatrops, because they are a thin disc of wood, um, one of the hazards is breakage, you know, maybe we might be playing with it too hard or we might um, sit on it or something and break it in half. Um, if this happens, please let uh, Native Health know and they will contact me and I will be happy to send you a replacement tomatrop. Uh, because I know the, the thickness of the tomatrop is kind of on the thin side, which I would prefer be a little bit more thin, thicker. But um, like I say, we do have a problem with breakage um, don't be shy and don't be afraid to let uh, the people at Native Health know that you need a new tomatrop and I will be very very happy to send you another one um, like I say I hope all of you guys are having fun so far um, I am looking forward to seeing all of your cool cool inventions and um, I can't wait to see everybody's um, everybody's coloring skills or painting skills actually um, like you say we, we do painting is um, really really calming actually it's one of the um, best ways to uh, keep your blood pressure down you know if you're stressed um, coloring is a, a great way to de-stress yourself and kind of like lose yourself in your imagination um, so it's very beneficial for coloring. Um, not only that, we get to practice our artistic skills. You know, I know a lot of, as an artist, um, I was, I found it was kind of hard to become an artist. You know, like we always, I hear a lot of people say that, um, say that, you know, oh, I'm not an artist. All I can draw is, is sticks, you know, um, that's something. Uh, so I say this gives us a chance to practice our artistic skills as well as our imagination. Oh cool, looks like Tisha's finished with her flower there. Uh, looks pretty cool so far. Um, I can't wait to see the bee. She could start doing the bee now. Um, so she's going to start coloring the honey bee. Um, bees are very important because they are pollinators they are required um they are required they they're needed to pollinate flowers trees um pretty much everything and sadly the honeybees are um, becoming extinct nowadays um so 
I always try to make um, I always try to make my objects that um, with a lot of bees on there nowadays so the bee, bees are, are very very um, kind of simple to color I made them um, you know like a, you can color the wings either white or you can um, color them in different shades like let's say the Sun is going through them and um, it can be sparkly um, I know we have eight I think it's 12 set watercolor sets um, so you're able to make other other colors using blending techniques uh, you don't just have to use solid colors so um, don't be afraid to use your imagination guys like I say um, Leticia does very very well with her coloring we're always happy with her coloring techniques and skills um, the bees you'll notice uh, pretty much anatomically uh, correct there you got the legs and a little fluffy back she's gonna paint the stinger looks like she's getting ready to paint the wings now um, I tried to use a lot of detail in my drawings or actually my burnings which is called pyrigraphy uh, the art of drawing with fire so all of the black lines you see are actually burned into the wood much like my spinning tops um, it's kind of tricky to get the burner to get um, so much detail out of it um, very very uh, a lot of patience is needed as well as steadiness of hand but one thing we do is learn steadiness of hand as we're painting our drawing our coloring our writing we're using our fine motor skills which are being developed every time we draw or paint or write um, I try to tell the little children, you know, like um, always when we learn, we're not learning just 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 to do it. You know, we, we, I try to make learning fun, I try to make learning interesting using these old wooden toys that I make. Um, I'm trying to bring the past back in a fun way that's um, very much needed. You know, there are a lot of um, a lot of classes that aren't taught in schools anymore. Um, sadly, history is one of them. So. Uh, these old toys teach us history as well as um, they teach us innovation uh, so it's cool to think that something as simple as this wooden disc with two images on us on either side of it actually is shown now when we watch our televisions when we watch our our devices such as where our phones or our laptops or iPads uh, every time we watch cartoons or movies it's cool to think that it all started from a simple disc of wood with two images on the side of it on either side of it and um, very very cool um, fact about animation is that everything we do nowadays came from something very simple at one time um, like I say this toy was said to have been played with in prehistoric times so uh, I get a big kick out of that, that um, the, I guess the evolution of a thing is really interesting to see and when we make our toys we're actually bringing that, or de-evolving modern times right now by bringing the past back to life in the form of toys, uh, in the form of mirth and fun. So looks like Leticia is getting very close to finishing her bee now. She's doing the rest of her wings, which looks like she's doing them very colorful. Um, this is going to be really cool to see, guys. Um, I'm hoping you're getting excited as well. Um, uh, when you guys are finished coloring your tamatrop, you'll be able to give it a spin. It usually takes a few seconds or so for your eye to adjust to the spinning motion or the persist persistence of vision. So. Um, if you don't see it right away, you know, just keep spinning that disc and kind of focus on it and you'll see the images blurred together. Um, a lot of the Timotrops started being made um, back in the 1800s were made out of paper. Uh, the very simple ones because like I said, they were, they were kind of expensive at that time. So a lot of the Timotrops were made from paper, um, very, very simple paper and string was not very expensive back then so um, 
it's pretty cool to think that this little toy was um, was worth a lot of money back then. Um, so today, it's um, it's fun to be able to color these these toys right now. Okay, um, we're gonna start to wrap it up. I believe Leticia is almost finished. She probably has about let's say five minutes to color. Um, by all means, everybody, take your time with the coloring. Um, take your time. Use your imagination. Like I say, don't be afraid of mistakes. Um, you can color the backgrounds as well of the objects. You know, add different colors to it. Maybe you want to put like a sunrise or a sunset into the background. That's no problem at all. It's your tomatrop, so you decide what you're gonna make out of it. You know, make it very, very, very colorful if you like. Um, it'll be really cool to see. Um, we're looking forward to doing more classes with you guys. I hope you really enjoy Hilltops classes when I do have them. I know usually it's with the spinning tops and coloring. So we decided to switch it up this time by uh, introducing another old toy that's uh, not widely seen anymore. So we hope you like your Tomatrop class today and let's see, let's see if we can see the magic happen. So Tisha's gonna give it a little spin there and it'll be a bee landing on top of a sunflower. Ooh, look at that. Oh, wow, all right, cool, that looks pretty neat. Um, once again, I am Gregory Hill and my company is called Hill Tops. Uh, I, alongside my daughter Leticia here, we are creators of toys, um, we're creators of fun. And we hope you guys enjoyed your coloring class featuring the 19th century toy Tomatrop, which is a wooden disc of wood that is made by allowing us to have persistence of vision to make these two images blend together uh, in a fun way. Uh, please share your completed Tomatrops with um, Native House Facebook page as well as their Instagram page. And we can't wait to hear from you guys. And we look forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, join us for another class. Have 